as a coach or consultant, if you want to scare somebody off, if you want to, to demotivate a person, just have them set big, hairy, audacious goals. Just that saying to me is just based in complete fantasy as reality. A silly, silly, silly saying made up by the guru fanboys on social media, fuzzy headed academics who've never left, left campus and pretend experts who last achieved something, last ran a company or had a successful marriage or a business in their distant memory. All, all long on style, short on substance. I built my career as a professional hockey coach, amateur team owner, coach 22 years, working with some of the most driven, hardworking, mentally tough athletes you could ever imagine. From the ages of 16 to age 35, depending upon the level. And I've never met an athlete worth his or her salt I've never met a champion in anything that wasn't a goal setter. A person who set goals, worked at achieving them, and was always thinking and acting on their goals. When I first got into uh, business working with other people, when I got into the insurance business and I started working with other people in an office environment, I was absolutely stunned how goal setting really isn't a part of 99% of businesses, it just isn't. You may have the alpha male CEO or founder, you know, this is our team mission, or these are our vision, this is our values. But to the people that run the company on the day-to-day -day basis, in 99% of the cases, those goals and missions and values mean very little. They're just words on paper, words on the wall. And when you come from professional and amateur high level sport like I do, goal setting is just part of your DNA. It's literally part of your life in sport as soon as you start playing. So I started playing hockey at the age of four years old, five years old, and you're always, you've always got team goals and you've always got individual goals. And you know, we wanna win a division championship. We wanna win a conference title. We wanna be the best defensive team in the league. We wanna have, you know, the least number, wanna be the least penalized team in our, in our conference, that kind of stuff. Goals, goals, goals. And when I got into business, I was just shocked at how it's just show up. Every day, just show up and react. So in my career as a consultant, as a coach with elite businessmen, the best of the best, my guys are over the age of 40. They're married with children and they're already successful in most areas of their life. They've got significant success, especially on the business side but they may be struggling in a couple of other areas. Could be marriage, could be their marketing, it could be time management, it could be their relationship with their children, it could be their physical or mental health, it could be, you know, building their legacy they need assistance with, it could be they need to give Matt back more and serve others. So they're already cleaners, closers, burn the boat guys they're already champions but we all have certain areas that we need uh, to uh, to do better in to bone up so that's who I deal with and one of the things that I refuse to teach as the great Brene Brown says if you have a list of things you have nothing but a BS list in other words what she's saying is is similar to what the great Tim Grover says in his book, Winning. If you have time for everything, you have time for nothing. And it's the same with goals. If you have a list 
of 10 goals, then you have no goals. If you have a list of 15 or 20 goals, well, you have no goals. It's the same as priorities. If you have more than three priorities, I believe you have no priorities. So my point here is less is more, especially when it comes to personal goal setting. So to me, goal setting is about two things. It's about you eliminating a bad habit and replacing it with a good habit. That to me is what goal setting is. You eliminate something you don't like in your life, a bad habit, and secondly, and this is the big part of making goals happen, you replace it with a more positive, you replace it with a good habit. So as an example, a person who quits smoking, that's one thing, and then instead takes up walking 45 minutes every single morning. So they stopped smoking and they replaced it with a positive habit, which is walking every morning. Same thing with somebody who says, okay, I, uh, you're gonna give up, the, you give up drinking alcohol. Well, the secret to giving up anything, to stopping anything bad, is to replace it with something positive. So they give up, you know, drinking alcohol and they start reading a book, you know, books, magazines, whatever it is, an hour a day. So they start feeding their mind instead of destroying it. They put fertilizer on the plant instead of tearing it down with gasoline and poison. So two examples of uh, replacing a bad habit with something that's good. When I teach goal setting, and I did this with my athletes, and I do it with my coaching consultants, I've done it with my employees, I've done it personally, is I will not set more than two to three goals at a time. Now I'll have a big list, and I do, I have a list in my journal of 25 things that I want to achieve over the next day, month, year, five years, 10 years. And I call that my vision board kind of bucket list where I'm gonna take a thing off there one at a time and I'm gonna you know, fix it, I'm gonna achieve it. But I do my goal setting one to two things at a time. No more for me than two. And this gives you such incredible momentum, you won't believe it because you don't look at a list that doesn't mean anything. You don't look at a list of 15 or 20, 10 things or 20 things and go, oh my God, every day I get up, like today, I just brushed my teeth, splashed some water, went to the bathroom, and I looked at my two goals that I've had on my bathroom mirror. That's a David, David Goggins trick where he calls the bathroom mirror the accountability mirror, where he gets up in the morning and he puts post-it notes, a couple of post-it notes up on the mirror he has for 25 years. And those are the couple of goals that he's looking to achieve. So I do that. So I get up this morning and I see that I have the two post-it notes there with my two goals. Not five, not 10, not seven, my two goals. And these post-it notes have been up there for 30, 35 days now. So these are the only two things that I'm working on in terms of goal setting. And here's what happens when you do something like this. Sure, you have your big list of 20 things that you want to do. Good morning. They, uh, but, but you focus on one or two at a time. And then once you achieve those one or two goals, you can take them off of your list, off of your mirror, and you add in another one, another two. And that's how you end up achieving 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 goals a year. You do it one at a time, two at a time. And this eliminates frustration. It eliminates, you know, uh, where people get frustrated, they get anxious, they quit, there's stress involved. When there's none of that, if you just set one or two goals. These are my top two priorities. It could be an area of your life that you need. Maybe it could be your health. Maybe it could be your marriage. It could be your relationship with your teenage kids. Whatever it is, 
pick the one or two top most important goals and make them your daily priority until you achieve them. Once you achieve them, you move on to one or two goals, new goals. And here is the advanced secret that most coaches have no clue about. When it comes to goal setting, so let's say you have your one or two goals. One of your goals is you want to lose 45 pounds of weight by the by in a year. And second goal is you want to, let's say, you want to go to bed an hour earlier every night and get up an hour earlier. So you're going to bed at 10 p.m. and you're getting up at 6 a.m. so you can pay yourself, so you can, so that the first hour of the day belongs to you. So those are your two goals. You want to lose weight and you want to go to bed consistent. You want to improve your sleep and you want to own your mornings by going to bed at 10 and getting up at six. So here's how this works. You start doing it, you write it down. You write your goals down. So you buy one of those journals, hardback journals, and you write those two goals down and you post them. So you post them on your bathroom mirror. These are the two things that I want to accomplish. Two things, that's it. Maybe it's just one, but no more than two. And I put them, my two goals, beside my bed and up by my nightstand. So I have my water at night before I go to sleep. I boom, I read my two goals before I go to bed. Then my subconscious is gonna be working on these two goals the whole night. Why not have your subconscious working for you eight hours that you're sleeping? So I also have my goals written in my journal. I have the two of them on my by beside my desk in my home office. I basically have them everywhere. My two goals, my two goals, my two goals. And here is the next level badass millionaire secret that most people, most men are just not willing to do. But if you do this, you will take your life and your business to a completely different level. Get up and write your two goals first thing every morning. Get up and write your two goals as if first thing every morning. So as if means as if you've already achieved it. So you get up, you say your prayers, you splash some water in your face, you brush your teeth, you get ready to head out and go for a walk or meditate or get moving, whatever it is you do first thing in the morning, paying yourself first in the morning. The first hour of the day belongs to you. It doesn't belong to your text, your email, or your spouse or your employees. The first hour of the day belongs to you to work on your agenda, to work on your priorities. So you get up, you do all those things, and then the very first thing you do, you never check your phone, you don't even have it near you. Should never, ever, ever be any technology in your bedroom where you sleep. None, not even a television set. Certainly not a smartphone, that stuff should be locked away. Put it in the kitchen drawer, put it somewhere, you're not gonna see it till later on in the morning. So you get up and you open up your journal and you write your two goals as if. So here's what it would look like or sound like. I have lost your goals to lose 45 pounds. I think that's what I said. I have lost 45 pounds in the last year. My clothes fit me. I feel fantastic. I have all day energy. My wife looks at me differently. My children are very proud of my accomplishment. I feel 10 feet tall. I feel unstoppable. As if, so you're writing that it's already happened. I lost 45 pounds and all the feelings that you have. Your wife is proud. Your children are proud. Uh, you know, you feel great in your clothes. You have all day energy and vitality. You feel and look fantastic. You write that down, that takes one minute. And then you sit down and you write out as if your second goal. So your second goal was to go to bed at 10 p.m. instead of staying up all night and fucking around on the computer and on your smartphone. This is why you get rid of that technology in your bedroom. It doesn't belong in there. Blue light does not belong in a bedroom. You need to be in there 
you know, you can do your nightly gratitude with your wife. But blue light, televisions, smartphones, and laptops don't belong in there. If you want to read, read a book. Read a magazine. Or better yet, go to sleep. So you get up and you've written that one goal. Then you write your second goal, which is I want to go to bed at 10 o'clock, eight hours sleep. Sleep is the number one magic drug on earth and it's free. So you want to get eight hours of sleep. You want to go to bed at 10 p.m. and get up at 6 a.m. Perfect. So you write it as if I have been going to bed at 10 p.m. seven nights a week, getting up at 6 a.m. before my wife, before my children, and owning the first hour of my day for the last year. It has changed my life and business in so many ways. I accomplished my number one priority in the first 30 minutes to one hour of the day. I feel less stress, I feel less anxiety, I feel less frustration. I am a better businessman, better marketer, better husband, but better father, better boss because of this discipline. So something like that, where you're writing it as is, but also the benefits. What has this new habit meant? And that's the last thing I'll emphasize. And by the way, you do this as soon as you wake up, it works in your conscious mind all day long. Those two goals, making it happen, making it happen, making it happen. And then the second thing is you do it at night. Absolutely mission critical that you write out your two goals as if those two goals again before you go to bed. So you're in your room, you know, 945, you've, uh, you're getting ready to, uh, to go to sleep and you have your, not your laptop, you have your journal beside you. And you look at your goals on the wall beside your nightstand. You've looked at them when you brushed your teeth and now you sit down on the edge of your bed. I do it every day of my life. And you write those two goals out. It takes two minutes as if, okay, I, I lost 45 pounds this last year. I feel fantastic. I look fantastic. My wife, my daughter, my son are so incredibly proud of me. I feel tremendous, whatever it is. Same thing with the 10 p.m. till 6 a.m. I now pay myself first. I own the first hour of my day. My life has been transformed in so many ways. Boom, you lay down, you say your gratitude, you and your wife share what you're grateful for, and you shut your eyes. Your subconscious now works on those two goals for the entire night. That's not woo woo, that's just reality. Any pro athlete, anybody knows that. You'd have to live under a stone to not know that that's a reality. Your subconscious now will work as long as you sleep. So then you wake up in the morning, you do it again. So you write out your goals, morning and night and like i said most guys don't have the discipline to do it well that, that your your life will be about dreams not about achievement if that's the case so i gave you something there you can do in literally two minutes every night before bed and literally two minutes uh before uh in the morning and at night that's all it takes so you wake up from a good night's sleep and you work on those goals the last thing I'll share is a game changer. And I learned this in pro sport years ago. And it's about making goals lifestyle. So here's the deal. How do you achieve a goal? You start. The stop is what starts, the, the start is what stops most. The start is what stops most. So start doing it. You wanna lose 45 pounds, okay. Here are the two or three things you have to do every day to lose 45 pounds. I gotta drink a gallon of water. I gotta walk 45 minutes every morning. I have to eat clean 85% of the time. Okay, got it. Those are the three processes I gotta do every day. So do them. And you do them for one day. You do them for two days. You mark them down every time on a calendar. Give yourself a daily victory. Check mark X. And then you do it for six days, seven days. Now you get seven days under your belt, starting to become a habit. Then you do it for eight, nine, 10, 14 days, two weeks, starting to become a habit. And then you do it for another seven days, 
16, 18, 21. You've done them for three weeks. Okay, you've been walking, you've been drinking water, you've been getting up at 6 a.m., you've been getting your rest, and then you hit 30. So now you're into definitely a habit. You've done this for 30. This is why you don't take days off. This is why your habits, there's none of this stopping and starting that the civilians do. You know, work for five days, then burn it down for two. You never achieve anything like that. Weekends make you weak. On the weekend, you can still walk. On the weekend, you can still get up at six. On the, if you're tired or you had to went to bed late, have a nap. But weekends make you weak. Seven days a week, no days off. Don't pour gasoline on the plant every weekend. You work hard to make the, achieve these things. Why stop on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday and pour gasoline on a plant that you've been fertilizing and growing during the week? Don't do it. Do the opposite. No days off. So here's where the magic happens. When you get to 45 days, you're now into the lifestyle. In other words, walking is becoming a lifestyle. Okay, getting up, going to bed at 10 p.m. lights out is becoming a lifestyle. No technology in your bedroom is becoming a lifestyle. Writing out your goals every morning and every night is becoming a lifestyle. Drinking a gallon of water is becoming a lifestyle. And you're seeing yourself dropping a pound or two each week. And you see yourself achieving more than you have with this hour in the morning than you, than you did the whole year before or six months before. So for most people, it's lifestyle around 45 days. It's now not what you do, it's who you are. So it takes me longer for some things as much as 90 days for it to be lifestyle. So if, if that's the case, I'll keep working on, one of, on my two goals for 90 days. But somewhere, somewhere between 45 and 90 days, you will, uh, it becomes lifestyle, an ingrained habit. You do this every day. Walking to be is an ingrained habit. Reading an hour a day is an ingrained habit. Um, Copywriting for an hour every day is an ingrained habit. You know, drinking a gallon of water for me is an ingrained habit. Gratitude with my wife every night right before bed is an ingrained habit. It's like brushing my, these things are like brushing my teeth. They're ingrained habits. So when that happens, okay, you can then take those goals, your two goals, your one goal, and you can move it off your list because it's an ingrained habit. Put it on your vision board where you see a picture of you walking. See, put something on your vision board where you see yourself, you know, getting up early, whatever it is. But now you can add another one or two goals depending upon when they're a lifestyle. So that's my point. A goal is to become a habit in around 30 days. And then as soon as you make it a habit, push to 45 days to 90 days, somewhere in there, where it's now a lifestyle, where you don't even have to think about it. I call it brushing your teeth, okay? You get up, you don't say, oh, I'm not gonna brush my teeth this morning, or you don't say, I'm not gonna brush my teeth in the, at night, you brush your teeth because it's been an ingrained habit since you were three years old. Well, this is what this is about. Goal setting is about ingraining lifestyle, making it a lifestyle habit like brushing your teeth. Walking becomes like brushing your teeth. Drinking water all day becomes like brushing your teeth. Getting up at 6 a.m. becomes like brushing your teeth. You don't think about it. You don't say, oh, it's Sunday, so I'm not gonna brush my teeth. You don't say, oh, it's Friday, so I'm not gonna brush my teeth. Or you don't say, oh, my brother's coming over, so I'm not gonna brush my teeth. It's an ingrained lifestyle habit. And again, that happens around 45 to 90 days. When that happens, you can take that goal off your list of two. Good morning. And uh, you can then replace it with a new goal. And that's all goal getting is, is taking a bad habit and getting rid of it and replacing it with something good. Bad out, good in. And keeping your list to one or two goals. And man, throughout the year, you're just chipping away at it. You're just like, oh, I just achieved that goal. Oh, I just achieved that goal. Wow, I stopped that. I stopped that bad habit. Oh, I stopped that bad habit. Oh, I stopped that bad habit. 
And the really inspiring and motivating part is you're also saying, oh, I, 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 I started meditating or I started drinking water or I started, uh, you know, a date night every week with my wife or I started reading an hour a day or I started writing half an hour a day or I started walking two miles every morning. And there you're into it where you're just replacing a bad habit with a good habit. And that's essentially what goal setting is all about. One or two at a time. No more. Post them where you trip over them. Put them up on the bathroom mirror. Put them beside your bed. And write your goals out every night and every morning. There's two of them. Boom, boom. As if you've already achieved it. And let your mind, let your mind and all and uh your subconscious at night work on achieving those goals. And I'll tell you, you'll accomplish more with this less is more strategy, my badass millionaire goal setting strategy than you ever have before in your life. And all it is is pounding the rock, chipping away. And people after six months to 12 months will start to say things like, man, what are you doing differently? They'll notice the change in you, the transformation because by the inch, it's a cinch, right? Just little, little things every day chipping away. Oh, I got rid of that bad habit. Oh, I got rid of that bad habit. One at a time, two at a time max. That's how goal setting happens in the real world. That's it for me, Michael McLean. I'm heading out for what my buddy Einstein Blueprint founder, uh, Dan Luenis says is real coffee today. He's actually picking me up this morning to take me for to have real coffee in Naples. He doesn't believe in my Dunkin' Donuts uh, coffee, but I'm gonna go with him because I love talking to Dan. He's out there. He's from another planet. He's from Planet Badass. And he is the founder and creator of the Einstein Blueprint. Super accel acceleration for your children. Badass. And he has his program has just been so incredible for our life, for my daughter, Emery. We, we don't do the homeschooling thing. That's not what it's about. What it is about is about uh, super accelerating uh, the growth of your children. And nobody does a better job than Dan the man. So that's this morning. I'm supposed to go and I'm supposed to have a coffee, which I will. And we're going to talk about important stuff. His stuff is mind bending, mind bending. Trust me, this morning we won't be talking about the weather. We won't be talking about politics or Joe Biden or the China virus. We'll be talking about things that really matter. Family, marriage, children, uh, mental toughness, time management. The guy is a machine. I just pay for the coffees and sit back and let him talk. He's a wine, he's a wind me up kind of guy. And if I can get a lot of coffee into him today, he'll be even better. So that's it. If you have not got a copy of my book, my non-bestseller, How to Not Get Your Ass Kicked in Business and in Life, please correct that mistake today uh, at nobullbook.com. The link is below. I write physical books, door stoppers. It's a real book. No, uh, none of this Kindle bullshit. None of this more screen time. None of this go fetch PDF. None of this $3.97, $3.97 Kindle. I don't do any of that. I self-publish because nobody would publish my truth-telling book books. So I do it myself. And you can get a hard copy. It's almost 300 pages, $20. Dan and I will spend that on coffee this morning. And so will you, your sugar coffees and your colas and all that other shit. And uh, 20 bucks. So go to nobullbook.com. I got some wicked, uh, wicked uh, things in there, bonuses. But remember, just a caution, okay? <laughs> I'm not everybody's cup of Earl Grey, and I'm certainly not everybody's cup of Crown Royal. I am a uh, hard-driving, accountability, kick-ass, you know, pro coach. And that's the style of this book. And if you're one of these guys, you know, looking for the next hack or the next shortcut, then don't bother buying this book. There's no refunds. There's no guarantees. You buy it, you own it. If you don't, oh, if you don't know me and you don't trust me, don't buy this book. I don't want the headache. It's 
It'll help you take your marriage, your business, your marketing, your relationship with your children, your physical and mental health to the next level. But it's not hand-holding and it's not for business candy asses, let's put it that way. Also, I have a great free resource for you at worldbuildingwebinar.com, the link is below. And this is a training I did about a month ago and you can watch it for free. There's nothing to buy um, and I'm not selling really anything. And it's my top 10 world building secrets. So as a consultant, I teach elite businessmen, 40 plus married with children, most of these guys over a million net worth. And I teach them how to build a brand new world. And what I mean by that is a world on their terms, on their rules. Basically, I teach these men how to finally live life and do business on their own terms. And how do I do that? I do that by teaching what nobody else teaches, which is the ancient art, ancient lost art of world building. And it applies to every area of their life. And they build a brand new world that includes their business, their marriage, their family, their children, everything. And they build it their way. So I teach an eight week coaching program on this very expensive, $25,000. Because the more they pay, the more they pay attention. So this is a cleaners, closers, champions, not for chumps. It's not for, you know, do nothings or, you know, whiners or what I call, uh, um, you know, pretend victims. It's not for guys like that. It's for ballers and cleaners and closers and champions. So if you're interested in being put on a waiting list, because it's closed right now. My world building society is closed right now because I'm doing a live training right now with a group of outstanding top 1% businessmen. So when I'm done with that, I may open it up again this summer. If you're interested in the next training, it's $25,000. If that turns your stomach, this is not for you. It's not the right time. Nothing wrong with that. There's lots of cheaper coaching programs out there. $1,000, $2,000. And there's a lot of coaches out there that are kinder and gentler than I am. And maybe that's your cup of coffee. So with all that said, if you are interested, you can apply below at badassmillionaire.com slash waiting list. And again, that link is below, World Building Coaching. And the World Building, before you do that, check out the free webinar, worldbuildingwebinar.com and check out if that's for you. It's my 10 advanced world building insider secrets that will teach you, if nothing else, how to start transforming your entire life, your entire business, your marriage. So that's it for today. I am off to a coffee house somewhere in Naples. I don't know, but I'll leave that up to Dan the man. Until we talk again tomorrow, if you like these mini adventures every day, it's basically me walking around the neighborhood <laughs> and I shoot these videos on my broken iPhone 7. I don't have any studio or any, any of that production that the other pretend gurus have. Good morning. I don't have uh, anybody that edits these or you know, makes them look better. It's completely unplugged, unfiltered, politically incorrect. And I'm gonna shoot these every day for as long as I can on YouTube before I'm canceled and deplatformed. And then I'll move to my own video platform, which I've already created. So I'm not here for a long time, I'm here for a good time. So if you enjoy my daily adventure, if you like coming on this daily adventure with me, uh, then you can subscribe to my channel below. You can also comment and like or dislike, whatever, it doesn't make any difference to me. I don't care, I don't do any social media. I don't go on YouTube, I don't participate in Facebook or anything like that at all. I do it business-wise, but that's through my business partner, marketing director, Mark Andre. He does all the posts, and I don't have anything to do with it. I stay out of that fucking swamp, and I read books, and I journal, and I read newsletters, and I'll listen to the occasional podcast 
a cleaner podcast, not these other guys. I'm very careful what I put in my supercomputer. So I don't participate in any of that, those mental illness swamps. I don't participate in any anti-social media. I don't carry a phone. I care, this is my broken phone that I use for these videos. It's been holding up pretty well. Uh, in days it doesn't work, I borrow my wife's phone. She's got the newest phone, whatever that is. And seems to work for me. I built myself a, a multiple seven figure businesses. It's a funny saying, eh? Like what is a seven figure business? And, and it's such bullshit. Seven, in my case, million dollar businesses, net, net. Not gross, not number of employees, net. And I built myself through pro coaching, sports coaching, consulting, and being a badass entrepreneur for 31 years, I've built myself uh, an eight figure net worth. So, you know, we live half the year now here in Naples and we live the other half on a uh, beautiful lake in Canada. So I'm living life, I'm doing what I teach. I'm living life and doing business on my own terms. I'm not teaching something that I used to do. I'm not talking about something in my distant memory. I'm not a retired authority. I do what I teach and I still do it successfully at a very high level. So that's it for today. I'm off to the coffee house. Two words that change my life. Remember, one or two goals only. Less is more. Write them down every day and uh, make them a habit and then make them a lifestyle at 45 to 90. Two words that change my life, two words that can change your life. Be relentless.